guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joni Young and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. I teach weekly step-by-step -step tutorials on just about everything from fantasy to still life and everything in between. So if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe now. Click that subscribe button and tap the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video, which is quite often. That being said, uh, the last few days we've been going through a bit of a hard time with our family. I won't get into it in detail, it's quite personal, but everybody is okay. We're going to take some time to heal. Everything takes uh, time and I want to thank everybody uh, for all of your prayers and your well wishes and support, especially on Patreon. You guys know a little bit about what's going on and I just want to thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. And before I start crying, I want to jump into this painting. <clears throat> Let's jump right in and get started on this painting, guys. So this is uh, 11 by 14 canvas. I primed once with acrylic gesso. I've got white gesso here and I just applied one coat. I let it dry. It, pre it prevents the paint from uh, soaking into the canvas so much and fading. So it creates a barrier. And what that does is it makes the paint, uh, the colors that you put on stay nice and bright and vivid, just like you first applied them. Um, Cause sometimes over time, even if you're working on the best highest grade of canvas, over time the colors will fade. So that's what gesso does. And it also makes uh, the surface of your canvas a little bit easier to blend and pull and spread that paint around. So I'm gonna go over some of the colors we're using today for this Monet Water Garden inspired painting. We're gonna have some wisteria coming down here. And I'm gonna be using to start titanium white, neon orange, neon yellow cool, and some green gold. We'll also be using bright aqua green, black, luminous neon rose, and some phthalo blue. I'll have everything listed below this video, full description, uh, all the brushes, paints we're using, and a link to a much, much larger version, another version of this painting I'm doing today. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to start with the background like I always do. We're going to create this light right here, this focal point center of interest that really draws us in and creates this moody landscape today. I've got a large round mop brush here, and I'm going to take some white first and just simply brush across just to have some white there for a base. It doesn't show up yet, but I'm going to go into my neon orange, a little bit of neon yellow, and I'm going to go move around in a soft oval shape. I'm going to bring it out down here. And then because we're going to have this hanging effect from the mysteria and maybe some weeping willows back there, I'm going to pull my brush up and down and have it kind of in that same direction and flow that those trees will be in. Okay, the next brush I'm going to be using is my Princeton one inch oval mop. So I'm going to be taking my bright, bright neon yellow cool and I'm going to start, see, just by using the end of my brush. Just lightly tapping. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to add a little bit down here. Whatever I put up here, I'm going to add hints of it down in the water. So it's very reflective of what's going on up above. Take a little bit more of that. So you can see how I'm bringing it partially over that orange right there. And I'm just scumbling the remainder of the paint out of my brush. Twirling my brush around in soft little circles. All right. Without washing my brush off, because all that paint is pretty much out of there, I'm going to go right into my green gold. We could grab a little bit if you have a bit of that yellow left and you don't want to waste it. Go ahead and pick some of that up. And I'm going to start on the top. I'm going to do a combination 
of brush strokes. So I'm going to press, pull, and flick. Then I'm going to be tapping. So the idea is to have it go dark to light. So every color I add, I'm going to go slightly over part of it. Not completely covering it up. Of course, we want to see all of those colors. And right under here. So that's where you want to be a little bit careful when you're coming down and it's meeting up with that previous color that you added. Now keep in mind what you're adding here may get covered up. Part of it will get covered up with darker colors and then our wisteria. I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush. Maybe create some drips down here along the side. That also helps to create that beautiful abstract effect that I like to incorporate in my paintings. Not always, but here on the side where it might be a little bit, um, a little bit blurry and out of focus because we really want to have our eyes drawn into the center here. We can let this come around and then with how thin it is from the water, we can just come around the edge here and start bringing this color into the water. And you can kind of just create these little tight S shapes and brush strokes by sliding and gently pulling back and around. This helps to leave a little bit of light in between. I'll just scumble out a little bit of this now. Because I have a lot of this paint left, I'm going to use it, applying it at the top here. And even if you decide, you know, if you're a beginner painter and you don't feel confident enough yet in painting the bridge, I definitely would teach this to my beginners, and I have. You can do it. Um, but in case you don't want to paint the bridge, you can use this as a background for anything. You could have even just the water, maybe some water lilies and some little bushes. And it would be a very serene and tranquil painting, even without the bridge. And just lightly adding this line here for where our bridge is going to be and it's going to come up here so we can go ahead just get that out of the way if we're you know if it's kind of just stressing us out a little bit let's just go right over and do a very low arch like that And I'm going to softly scumble, slide in my brush. It's a very pretty shade of green, greeny yellow, this green gold. It's very pretty. I like it. Okay, I'm going to just take a little bit of my black now. And I'm deliberately putting it in with the yellow and the green gold so I can just make a deeper shade really dark rich deep shade of green and I'm going to start to go over this now what I might want to do is this first because it's making this a little bit lighter which is good because I want this kind of mid-tone and then I'm going to dry it off And then we'll be able to come in with a really deep, dark, almost black 
shadow color here and silhouette along the side. So we have our bridge right here, a nice low arch, and then we've also got another arch up here. It's like a, a roof sort of above, like an arbor, that all the wisteria is growing around and through. And then right down here, Lightly pull. I'm going to line my brush up right here. Drag, pull, and then let off. So it's going to be a little bit, a little bit thicker right here. So if you just line it up, the width of the brush, start to pull, and then see that? Lift, twist, and pull over. And then we'll add a little bit of shadows down here in the water. And create those tight little S shapes from brush strokes or some gentle little reflections and ripples. I'm just going to define this a little bit more. And then we're going to have a railing that comes right about there. Don't worry if it's not completely even, that's okay. You can always add some little plants or flowers to hide your imperfections. So I can do this with this brush, create the little posts for our railings, but I think I will be going over them with the turquoise after and a little, but see what happens because it's an oval, you're gonna get that bit of a twist. So that's why you wanna switch from this brush to either a flat brush or a liner brush. I'm going to use my flat brush. This is a number eight Pro Stroke by Power Krill. And I'll just adjust this. I'm placing my pinky to steady my hand to give me more control. Now we've got two sides to this bridge, right? There'll be posts on the other side. So those posts are gonna be not completely balanced because of the angle we're on, but they're gonna be pretty close. taking a little bit more black and I just pull and sweep like this. More black down here. More black with a little bit of water. I'll come in here and add 
Some more ripples. And you can add ones that are a little bit narrower and tighter together. So let's add a line under here. And then to make tighter ones, you're just going to kind of zigzag or you can make the really ripply rounded edges to them. You can also pull and flick like this. You get more of a blurry look. I'm just going to kind of scumble this around the edge here. It's going to be really in shadow. And you can go tight together like that. There's a few different brushes that you can use for creating water ripples and reflections like this, this flat one. You can also use a liner brush as well as a filbert. You'll see some of them are darker and some of them are a little bit lighter so you get some lighter tones in there. Okay, so I'm going to come up here now and I'm going to be using first this flat brush to create the other, the arbor, so this other art shape that comes up here and it's going to be pretty covered up by the wisteria, right? So we don't have to worry too much about how it looks. Don't get too finicky about it. So we'll just do a simple one like that. Another one that comes up. And maybe just Pulling and twisting with our brush to create a sort of a rope look. It could be the starting of the, the branches and the, the tree trunk for the wisteria, just to get a feel for it already. And then there's some posts. We'll have some posts that come down like this. And we'll put another one right here. really don't want to put one right down here through the middle and quite honestly looking at photos I can't find one that comes that shows one that's possibly right here but I am going to have some cascading you know little bits of wisteria and greenery coming down anyway so it doesn't really matter and I've got a little bit left on my brush here I'm going to create a little bit of a, a bank behind Nestled behind this bridge. Just bring this down a little bit lower. I'm going to turn it like that so it's straight on the bottom. And here as well. I'm going to come in again with my Princeton oval and I'm going to take black again. Might have a little bit of green left in there, not too much. So now I can create this nice, rich, dark shadow around the edge.
Remember darkest on the outside. And then whatever paint you might have left over in your brush, that's not too thick. You can just gently scumble. We really don't want to cover up all of the greeny yellow colors that we have in between and behind there. But we do want to add a little bit more shadow in here. We could have maybe the indication of a few little bushes in and around here. And then a light little scumble. So you can even create ripples with this brush too. We're going to be using turquoise next. It would be this color right here. And today I'm using Liquitex Basics Acrylic Bright Aqua Green or any turquoise that you have. Okay, so I've got my turquoise now. This is dry. And my flat brush, my number eight flat brush again. I'm going to go right into this turquoise. I want to have it on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to start by lining it up and pulling across. And I'm going to start to pull my brush this way to create the walking part on the bridge. I'm going to take a little bit of white with that turquoise left in my brush. And so right from here, we're going to add that. I'm going to take a little bit more white this time. Just give the indication, right, that it's going to get narrower, more narrow up here. I'm going to grab more turquoise now. And I'm going to go across the top over the railing. I'm going to go back into my black before I go any further and come right under here and go right back to that shadow that we have, but we've got just a hint of that green in there. Because this bridge is pretty much in silhouette, except for the light that is hitting right there. And we'll re-add these little posts on the bridge. Continue our shadow right down here underneath. I like these a little bit thicker because I'm going to come inside them with some turquoise. So we'll get a little bit of turquoise here. Add that. Now if you notice me leaving some of them just thin black, it's because those are the ones that are behind. And I'm going to come back in with my turquoise again.
And just the railing you can faintly see on the other side. We'll set a little bit of green in there. And maybe just a little bit here. Maybe these are the same color. I'm sure they probably are. We'll just add a little bit of uh, turquoise to these posts that come down. Maybe continue We're right up there. And we're going to add some below in the water now. We want to reflect these colors right down here. So we'll not completely mirror it, but just wherever we have above and below, we'll do a little bit of that color. Look how pretty it looks layered over part of that black. You can add this wherever you want. Because the bridge spans from one side to the other, goes all the way across, um, you really can't incorrectly do this, feel free to add it wherever you want or follow along. I'm just going to tint my white with a little bit of this turquoise and incorporate another tone. So we've got a little bit in here, you know, going on from this area in here. I'm even going to add a little hint of it back there just because I think it's pretty. I'll take a little bit of, a little bit more white. So it's such a soft, early morning, foggy kind of a look back there. Let's add a little hint of it here as well. A little bit more white in my brush. Whatever color I notice that I'm adding this over top of is creating a different one. So it almost looks, I don't know how it looks through uh, the screen for you guys, but here in real life, it looks a little bit mauve or lilac -y colored. Okay, I'm just going to start stumbling some white this white over top of part of the black. This is gonna be the beginning stages of our wisteria. So again, just taking a bit of that white. If I have a hint, a hint of, and I do have a hint of turquoise in there, that's just fine. They're complementary colors anyways. Okay, so we'll just do this. This will just help the purple show up a little bit better after. Right in here, a bit more white. Really brighten this up. I'm gonna go back to a little bit of my neon orange that has managed to not dry out yet. And I'm just gonna sweep a little bit of that beautiful color in there. I'm gonna add some hints of it back here. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of this pretty apricot color that I'm making. A little bit of white with that neon orange again, if you missed that. Cover this up here, not completely, just going to add 
right over this. So what this is going to do is bring this bridge even more into the foreground and set that back there. Okay, I think it's time to come in with our next color and I'm going to be using some phthalo blue. One of my favorite shades of blue. Okay, so still going to use my flat brush here. I'm just going to take about a bit of water on my brush. Get just a little bit more. Definitely don't want it dripping. Just want to really thin this out and make it transparent. And I'm going to start adding this over top. a few areas where I want to do this so I don't have to bring it over everything just want to bring in another color here that I think will bring a little bit more magic and depth to this painting and it's personal for everybody I just really like this blue but you can use any blue that you want of course and I'm going to go up and around the side and I'm even going to bring this over this area here. I'm going to soften this a little bit with my finger. I'm going to go around the edge here. I'm going to begin to scumble side to side. Again, phthalo blue, in case you missed this. It's the color that I'm adding right now. Some of these areas the color will change slightly when I come in with my uh, luminous rose. So I don't want to lose all this green gold that I've got. I just want to add a little bit more shades of green. So we've got different temperatures going on, cool and warm green. Take more paint. It's going to be darker and richer now. And I'm going to very Carefully just slide and wiggle side to side without letting my brush off. Take a bit more. Okay. I'm just taking a little bit more of my green gold. Add a little bit more down here. Have some of these start to cascade a little bit lower. So, and I'm just using my flat brush, but you can use um, Filbert or go back to that oval mop if you want. up just a little bit more of that green gold and a hint of a little hint of black so we've got a little bit more of foliage going on back here it's a little bit of something else so i've got luminous rose and i'm going to take a little bit of my light ultramarine blue this is by golden acrylics really nice brand both of these are highly recommend them okay so same brush that flat brush Take a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. Again, this is light ultramarine blue I'm using. If you don't have this shade, just take ultramarine blue and mix it with a bit of white and you'll get that color. So I'm just going to start to add little hints of this now. There's some really soft shadows that are complementary. 
I'm gonna mix up some more of that color, take a few more white with it. And pull some lines in here for some shadows coming down from the bridge. I know that seems scary. You guys can do it, just be brave. Don't be too afraid. And then I'm gonna to start to wiggle my brush, come around down here, pick up a little bit of white. Just wanna scuffle over this side. Give this more of a foggy look and over that green gold that we added there as well. And come inside here. A little bit of white and blue. And see, I made that really thick, right? I didn't see how I'm not over blending. I want to have a very ripply look it happens sort of naturally here on its own i want to take some of that blue both blues now okay i'm just going to scoop that up on the tip of my brush and i'm going to add little hint of that in on the side and I'm also going to add some right down in here take more of my phthalo blue there's still a hint of that ultramarine in there but not a lot Turn my brush over. I'm going to add a little bit. Wherever I put that white, when we come up with our luminous rose, we're going to get a multi tonal effect going on of different purples, lilacs. And hints of blue in there that's going to be quite pretty. Just gonna soften that and blend that out a little bit. Take a bit of white, a little hint of that light ultramarine blue. I've hardly got any paint on my brush right now. back to my little Princeton oval mop brush and I'm going to take some of that phthalo, a little bit of black, a little bit of turquoise and just add a few little bushes in here. Just a little something like that to finish the edge off there a bit better. I don't really want to see where the, the bridge ends or begins, kind of like it nestled in there and tucked in there like that. And I'll come right underneath with my phthalo blue black mixture. Just cut right in there. You can even pull, flick, and then go across. Right little pulls and flicks, and a sweep across. Well, we could just keep adding and adding, couldn't we? And I think it's time to start coming in with our wisteria. And I think the perfect brush, in my opinion, to use would be a filbert brush for this. And I'm gonna just tap in, get my brush a little bit wet first, tap into that luminous rose, neon rose. 
and I'll take a little bit, ooh, a little bit of that white, light ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to start coming in here. See, light little taps. Wherever I place it over top of the blue that I added earlier, it'll turn purple. We'll get different tones. So let's just be a little bit braver in color and add a little bit more of that luminous rose here. Even add hints of it right in here. I think that's pretty. And then soften and stumble out. Now let's take a bit of all three of those colors, phthalo, rose, and light ultramarine blue. And we'll bring a few down here lower, so it's a little bit darker. You know, right where we have these posts. And don't forget about the reflection in the water. You want to add a hint to that. to add a little hint of that color. A little bit down here. I'm just going to tap in to my blue and white again. And I'm going to add a few little lighter areas. Still leaving the dark underneath. This will just give you a 3D look to your flowers. And you get a really neat natural pattern when you use the brush this way and tap. You're kind of creating a bit of a stipple texture and shape to your brush. Keep in mind this is going to dry a little bit darker. It does help having that uh, gesso, but if you're worried about it looking too light, it'll dry a little bit darker. up a little bit before we call this one done. I'm going to just add a little bit more shadow right under here. I'm just watering down a little bit of my black with green gold for this. To finish this off, I'll go into my black deep phthalo, or just black is fine. And I'm going to Place my finger where it's nice and dry. I'm just going to finish this edge off here. Bring it up a little bit higher. It's a nice way to sort of clean this all up. So I'm going to take a little bit more of my green gold now and create a few little bushes here. And I'm going to start right in here. And along this side too. I'm going to just 
come right in here in between. Whatever's left in my brush, I'm going to add a little bit. Just scumbling around, partially over the purple wisteria, but mainly in between. And I'm going to come in with more of that green gold and add a bit of that to the water as well. Not everywhere. Remember, we want to have different variations of colors. Okay, I'm going to just grab a little bit more black. A little bit more that comes up kind of along the edge here. And it starts to turn up the edge just like this. And then we can just tap and add a few more subtle, very subtle hints of shadows in here. Very carefully right in here, just add a little bit more. Okay, with a, we just got a small, mini little uh, round mop brush. So I take some of that green with my white. And I'm going to start by tapping in just for some little highlights. Add a little bit along the side here. Just adding little bits of light. Now what would Monet's water gardens be without some lilies? I use my little, just a little filbert brush for this. Again, that green gold, a little bit of white. And I'm just going to start by making really skinny ovals. These will show up best wherever you have the darkest colors underneath. So we could just have a little patch right about there. Maybe a few right here. We won't do too, too many. And just for a little bit more contrast with a clean brush, I'm going to go right underneath and around the side. If it's not dark enough, I'll just go into more of my black. These almost look like lily, lily pads down here, don't they? I didn't even do that on purpose. So I'm going to use a little bit of Luminous or Neon Pink by Holbein again. I'm going to use a little bit of my Luminous Neon Yellow Warm. And I've got a liner brush. This is the number two liner brush I'm going to be using. I'm going to take my pink, yellow, and white. And I'm just going to start adding some little dabs here and there. And then a little bit of a bigger one here to create some foreground. So I didn't overblend. I don't want to get one solid color. I just took a little scoop of each one. And I'm going to make a larger one here. And then a few that are really close together so it looks like we have a little patch in here of water lilies. 
If you want, you can have a little reflection in the water. Just add a few little ripples like this down below. I'm just going to take my finger and just create a light little I have a lot of paint on some of these areas and I'll just do little dabs. This creates a little soft, hazy, glowing effect. Making them look a little bit more impressionistic. Take a little bit more of my white. And I'm going to take white with a little bit of my ultramarine blue. Let's get a little bit more white in there. And we're just going to start pulling little petals like this. Not completely covering up that pink and yellowy peachy color that we have there. Just a little something like that. You can have a few little squiggles coming down from them. If you want to add a little bit more color, a little bit more light maybe, go back to the white and that luminous yellow. Just go and pull a few little, this is just very impressionistic. If you guys want to add every little petal into your painting and make them look a little bit more clear and detailed, go ahead. This is just the kind of look that I really like. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit more of my blue for some shadows. I'm just going to kind of go under some of these. Again, using my light ultramarine blue here. All right, so I'm going to call this one done. I want to thank you guys again so much for joining me today. I hope you uh, liked watching this and you want to paint along. Uh, for more videos and art inspiration, tips and techniques, subscribe now to my channel by clicking that button right there, the subscribe button, tap the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for all your support, guys. It means a lot. Leave a comment below as well if you found this video helpful and inspiring today. Take care, and I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye!